Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Where's the girl? In her chambers, asleep. She left the hideous doll to take her place. Doesn't she know we have a program to broadcast and that the show must go on? I attempted to rouse her from her slumber for that exact reason. I did not succeed. Obviously. Is she ill? No, she is simply exhausted. She spent the entire day filming clips for the Bodega Bay Tourism Bureau. Ah, of course. This is the contest she spoke of, where she wins free soup for a year if she submits the best Things to do in Bodega Bay video. I have to support this effort. At least she's doing something productive that doesn't involve knives, explosives, nor that destructive trebuchet she uses to snuff out tourists. Ah, of course. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The man over here is Mr. Livingston, and this abomination would be Tangela's most repulsive poupee. Tonight, we have a spectacular film in store just for you, for we shall screen Target Earth from 1954. This is an alien invasion film. It's also a robot film. It's also something of a rather poor imitation of The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951. But we cannot afford to broadcast the latter movie, so you're stuck with this one, friends. Starring Richard Denning, Kathleen Crowley, Virginia Gray, and Richard Reeves, this is really not too shoddy of a film. I find the robot is somewhat more frightening than Gort. There's none of this silly Klaatu Brada Nictu nonsense, and the two supporting characters are perpetually drunk. And, and it also stars Whit Bissell as Tom, the chief research scientist, so there's that. Who's our guest tonight, Livingston? Another no-show. Yet another bashful absentee guest. I suppose I myself would have some hesitation as well if I were asked to follow the legendary Pamela Ferdin for a seat in the guest chair. It had nothing to do with that. You couldn't afford his appearance fee. It was less to do with the appearance fee as it was his bloody appearance rider. Only red M&Ms in the dressing room? What kind of a psychopath makes a request like that? Everyone knows it's only the green ones that are worth segregating. In any case, don't go away, because it shall be another frightening night of robot alien fright, right here on Creature Features! Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. It's that time of the week. It's Creature Feature time. Yes, it is. He like he does not like Creature Feature night. Andrew does though, right? I do. Andrew's sitting in for Tangela because she's sleeping. She's tired. She's quite tired. No, no. But you know what's nice is the footage she shot today. We're going to show some clips of it because yeah, you, you, you. So I found out that she took our crew, who works here tonight, 
these poor blokes out here behind these cameras, she took them into town and made them work today. Overtime. Tonight is going to be the overtime. The poor, she's, she's in a room sleeping because she's tired and the, the, the blokes are stuck here filming my face now. In your face, so that's sad. That's Anyways, welcome to the show. We have a wonderful evening in store for you. It involves a movie and not so much, uh, you know, Hendrew, he's a good fill-in for Tangela because she doesn't speak, if you haven't noticed that. She doesn't like to speak for some reason. I mean, she speaks to me. She speaks to him. She says vile things to him as well. But uh, no, as soon as the cameras come on, she won't speak. But she's asleep, so uh, Andrew's going to fill in. And uh, how are you doing, Andrew? Great. Yeah. I didn't have to work today. And let's oh. keep it down. Keep, and make sure yeah. she doesn't wake up. Well, no. I, you know, it'd be nice if she woke up soon, because at some point, you know, I'm going to run out of things to ask you. You know, all I could talk to with this bloke about is toilets and plumbing and wood and things. Mm. Right? All right. Yeah. Uh, he's, he gets a little boring after a while, but maybe we'll spice it up with something different. Film tonight, Target Earth. Have you seen this one? No. So uh, it's an alien invasion film, much like The Day the Earth Stood Still, except uh, it's got a different robot. And different it doesn't soundtrack. have a nice alien. Mm. So it should be fine. That's black and white. What do you think, Mr. Livingston? You've seen it. It's interesting. You know, he has a very bland way of describing a movie. Did you like it or not? Yeah, I found it interesting. See what I mean? This is, this is how I get advice from him. So, Mr. Livingston, should I buy the Mercedes or should I, should I buy the Jaguar? And what does he say? Which would you prefer? I get no answer from him. It's, it's, he's, he's the most unopinionated, opinionated person in the world. Oh, you not. have to live with it, and you have to buy it. Uh, that's true. And he's, he's a little square, too. Yes. All right. All right, well, what do you blokes say? Should we start this film? Now, you know what? You had no luck waking her up. I bet he could wake her up. No. Yes, no, no. Go up with one of your power tools no. and drill something in the wall and wake her up. No. No, you should go. You need to do this. We, that need, we need your help with this. Very interesting. We need your help with this. So, Henry's going to go wake up Tangella, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to show a little clip of what she shot today. And uh, let's start the film. Target Earth, 1954. Don't go away. It's going to be a fun night.
Bennett? Mrs. Bennett? It's Nora King. Mrs. Gordon? Are you in there? Miss Gordon? Somebody answer.
closer. Take it easy. I'm not going to hurt you. Help me. Oh. That's more like it. Now, calm down. Let me go. Please. Relax. I am not going to hurt you. Then why did you chase me? Well, why did you run? I was afraid. That girl in the street, I thought... That I killed her? Well, now, look, it will make you feel any better. Think this over. If I had killed her, I'd be miles away from here by now, wouldn't I? I suppose you're right. It's just that the whole city's so quiet and empty. I... What could have happened? I wish I knew. Everything since dinner last night is a complete blank to me. I don't understand. Well, I only got here from Detroit yesterday afternoon. Just killing time between trains. I should have known better than to flash a big roll in a bar. You mean you were robbed? Yeah, and slugged and dumped in an alley. Oh, then you were unconscious through most of the night. Oh, I came to about noon. The only thing I had left was a headache. I have to say, I owe you an apology. Well, that makes us even. You know the way back to the center of town? Yes. Well, we better get moving. Yeah. Have a lot better chance of finding out what's happened when we get there. Not that it's so important at a time like this, but my name is Frank Brooks. I'm... I'm Nora King. Hi. Hello. How come you're still in town? I was asleep in my room, and the door was locked. Well, then you haven't any idea what happened last night. No. Have you? Well, there's been an evacuation of some kind, but the question is why? The H bomb. Maybe there's going to be an attack. Oh, it's possible, but I don't think so. The enemy wouldn't give us advance notice of a thing like that. What about our radar system? Four or five hours warning at best. It's taken at least twice that long to evacuate the city. Well, then how about germ warfare? There's been a lot of talk about that. The water isn't running. As far as that goes, none of the utilities are working. Well, in that case, there'd still be patrols around town. The army, the police, civilian defense. You know, for some reason, they had to get everybody out of town. But there were half a million people here yesterday. Now, for all we know, there are just the two of us left. It doesn't make sense. It has to. It happened. And in about 12 hours, too. I wonder if there's anyone else left in town. There's probably a few. You ever try to empty a sack of sugar? Hmm? What's that got to do with it? Some of the grains always stick to the sack, like the two of us. There's something tells me we'd better get out of here fast. How would you like to go? Bus or taxi? I'm serious, Nora. The only reason they'd clear out an entire city like this would be to get away from certain death. That would mean anyone still here is... Well, a dead pigeon. Funny, I was so anxious trying to find somebody, anybody, that I never thought of that. I did. You don't seem to be worried at all. Maybe not. Not of dying, anyway. Dying is such a normal thing, but with nobody around We'd I... better start walking toward the center of town. If we only knew how much time we have. <laughs> This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, 
you're a little bit late, but you're okay because not much has happened in our film tonight, which is Target Earth 1954. 1954. You were like 25 years old in 1954, were you not? Uh, not quite. Not quite. Yeah, he's an old guy. But he's, he's a good guy, but he's still an old guy. We, we don't know exactly how old he was, but we suspect he was around during the Harding administration. Warren G? Warren G. This sounds like some kind of rapper, does it not? So I wouldn't like, know that. Or like, or like uh, what do they call them? DJs? DJs. It's like a DJ Warren G. I don't know. Anyways, uh, fun night. Uh, we do not have Tangella, it would appear. Uh, though we just showed one of the clips from uh, her Bodega Bay adventures. You know, I'm thinking if, if we gave her a camera crew, she might stay out of trouble more often. Oh, I don't know. I'm worried about their camera crew's safety. Oh. So you're saying she would, instead of abusing tourists, she would take that abuse and just focus it on the camera crew? Well, she complains that they don't make her look as good as she thinks she looks. Oh. Well, that could be a potential. I do that as well. But I suppose I don't hit them after I say this, so there is a small difference. Quite. Anyways. Uh, Hendrew is going to try to roust her from her slumber because she, uh, I, I suppose she was just too tired after a day in the sun. That should be rather amusing. No, it was a nice day in Bodega Bay today. It was, uh, it was what was it, like 75 degrees, which is not too common here because uh, this is a, uh, what would you call this type of uh, climate? It's... Uh, Blustery. It's a blustery place where the wind blows and mm. the birds sometimes attack. And it's foggy. And it's foggy sometimes, but not today. It was sunny. It was a, it was a beautiful day. So, uh, anyways, what's new, Mr. Livingston? It's the same old thing, taking care of this house, supervising the staff, and trying to fulfill the orders that you give from time to time. You know, I don't give him difficult orders. It's like, you know, find me a souffle that uses bananas you know it's it's not that big of a request no he once accused me of being pregnant because of the strange food combinations i requested i said that you seem to be have the same malady as a pregnant woman same thing same thing anyways what do you say we get back to this film yes please all right back we go to target earth 1954 and when we come back we're gonna do some mail or something right Yes. Right. All right. Off we go. See you soon. I just had an idea. If we could get our hands on a portable battery radio, we might be able... Okay, let me take you back for a minute. What are you going to do? Hold this. Stand back so you don't get cut by flying glass. Well, so far, so good. You know, they shoot people for looting at times like this. I don't care, just so we find a radio that works. Oh, I don't see any. Uh, you check that display case. I'll see if there's anything back here. Frank, look. Oh, I'm afraid you're wasting your time. The phones are out, too. I checked a couple of them earlier. Any luck? I'm afraid not. Looks like you're not doing too well, either. Oh, wouldn't that lick Jeff? Let's try the back room. Well, this is more like it. There must be at least one set in all this junk. Well, ordinarily, I suppose there would be, but portables would be at a premium at a time like this. The Army probably ordered everyone who could to carry one. Nora, I found one. Turn it on quick. No battery. Probably ship them separately. There must be one somewhere. Now, 
It's no use, Nora. I've already checked that shelf. There isn't a battery in the place. We're right back where we started. Well, at least we're still alive. But for how long? It's getting worse every minute, isn't it? Look, we'd better get out of here. We can't afford to waste any more time. What's that? Be quiet and listen. Sounds like a piano. Coming from up the street. Well, let's take a look. The whole town's deserted. We might be blown up any minute, and somebody's in there playing the piano as if they didn't even care. Yeah. Wait here while I check. You mean alone? All right. Come on, but be quiet. Joint is us anyway. Treat a lady like that. Well, it be. Paul Roger, 43, or uh, Bollinger, 48? Makes no difference, just so it's wet. Right. That's good enough for you. Good enough. Let's have one of each. Like old times, eh, Vicky? Are you kidding me? When'd you ever buy me champagne? Oh, I was saving it for a honeymoon. Look, Niagara Falls. Well, what do you know? After 10 years, I finally made it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. They're celebrating as though it were New Year's Eve. Well, maybe they just like privacy. Either they're crazy or we are. Only one way to find out. Come on. But what do you know? Hey, Vicky, we got guests. What did I tell you? We weren't the only ones left behind. Come on, sit down. Join the party. Hey, what are you two doing here? Waiter, glasses, please. Very good, madam. <laughs> well, now, look, the whole city's deserted. We've been all over town looking for someone. What are you doing here? Living, man. Really living. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, you ain't the guy that owns this dump, are you? No. Hardly. I'm Nora King. This is Frank Brooks from Detroit. Detroit, huh? You sure picked a fine time to visit this town. <laughs> you can say that again. You sure picked a fine time. All right, we heard you the first time. That's Vicki Harris. Never shuts up. I'm Jim Wilson. Well, now that we're all friends, how about some champagne? You mean you're going to sit here and, and whoop it up when heaven knows what's going to happen or when? Not just here, lady. There are a lot of high-class joints I always wanted to crash. The St. Regis, the Ritz, we're gonna hit them all. That's what you said last night. Now look at the spot we're in. Hey, honey, you look like you could stand something to eat. At a time like this, no thanks. Now, wait a minute, Nora, she's right. We'd better have something while we figure out what to do next. Well, there's everything in the joint from roast turkey to salami. I'll see what I can whip up. Uh, doll face, fill her up. <laughs> I said I wanted a drink, not a bath. How about a little more turkey? Mm, not me. One more bite and I'd split my girdle. Mm, I know just what you mean. You know, there's no telling how long it'll be before we run across any more food like this. We ought to try to figure out a way to take some with us. What makes you think you're going anywhere? Well, use your head. You can't stay here indefinitely. Why not? We're doing all right. Yeah, maybe, but uh, our luck can't hold out forever. We should at least try to get out of town. What? And leave all this? Not on your life. We never had it so good, right, Vicky? Right. I spoiled the party. First decent joint you've taken me to in ten years. That's only because it's free. Fill her up. Crazy dame. You know, this isn't the only good nightclub in town. Why don't we try the uh, Club Royale? Now you're talking. 
What? That's over five miles away on a main highway. Well, whatever. There ought to be plenty of places along the way we can stop. And who knows, we may even find a portable radio while we're at it. Well, if you put it like that, okay. Let's go. Oh. Sure you can make it? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Come on, honey. I'm with you. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Letters. You send us letters. So it makes the show better when you send us a letter. Please don't sing. Well, you know, I told you we need to hire somebody to write us a, a theme for letters. So that when we come back from the break, there's a thing that plays. A thing? Because start the letters. Music. Of course, bloody music. What do you think? Like a maybe a sousaphone? Sousaphone. A, a sousaphone. This is a big one. Interesting. It's, it's a good for oompa music. You know, he knows everything about oompa music because he's from Germany. It's not called oompa music. Well, I call it oompa music. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? I have a letter from Joe Marco. Joe Markham? Marco. 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 That's an Italian name, right? Could be. Marco? Unless they took off, like, the Vich. Could have been Marco Vich at one time. Uh -huh. yeah, Ellis Island destroyed names they took, changed everyone's name they did it was terrible all right joe marco says just started watching your show you used to watch creature features back on long island new york in the 70s there's a long island yes creature features in the 70s all right just came across your guys and my youtube suggestions page i'm now hooked i truly love your opening credits and theme song sung by Zetro from Exodus. And the cast is just perfect. Now, why do they always call us cast? I have no idea. Yeah. If anybody was an actor, it'd be Tangella, because she acts like a brat. And she I, is a I brat. couldn't act my way out of a paper bag. And this man, he, he, if we could get him to act, he could act nice now and then, maybe. It would be nice if you acted nice. I think I'm quite nice. Be nice. Uh, let's see. Tangella, cute but yet creepy. Livingston, what can I say? Spot on. And of course, our grand host himself, Vincent, keeps them all in line, as one would say, and the movies, of which many of them I've never seen. And that I love about you guys. I love Svengoolie, but he tends to be a bit repetitious with his films, although this Saturday he's showing something from the 80s. But I can watch you guys every day on YouTube. Okay, so the Svengoolie thing, I learned an interesting thing about him on uh, the show, he uh, has to show movies twice in the year. He cannot rent a film once. He has to rent it twice. So he has to rent it twice. So that's why you see the same movie twice on Svengoolie. Logical. Well, no, it's not mm. logical. Why, why would you want to rent something twice? It's the rule. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. I'm a big Bigfoot movie fan. Have you guys shown The Legend of Boggy Creek yet? Uh, no, we have not, because we cannot find a decent copy of that film. Every copy is has been destroyed. It's like everybody threw the film away, and there's only one copy left. It's terrible. So we would love to show that film, but we cannot find a decent copy. Right? That's why. Uh, keep up the great entertainment. I am a longtime horror movie fan, and now I'm a big fan of you guys. Keep up the great work. Joe Marco. Well, thanks for writing, Joe, and I, I suppose he's in... New York, right? I will assume that it's here. It's Long true. Island, New York. All right, next up, Mr. Livingston. You now, it's strange having Jay him deliver mail from over here. Jay Wilson from Webster, Massachusetts. Webster, Massachusetts. You know, I bet that's where they wrote up... The dictionary? The dictionary, right? I doubt it. No, it was Webster. Webster's Dictionary. 
All right, what do we got? Noah Webster. A handwritten actually. note, very nicely handwritten. Hmm. Thank you. Legible. Legible, and it's from Jay Wilson, which is Jenny Wilson. Oh. Her name's Jenny. Jenny, I've got your number. You know that song, don't you? I know that bloke. Unfortunately. No, no, no. He's one know, of your friends. He is one of my friends. You know, he used to he used to come to my home late at night and play that song in my living room. In Beverly Hills, yes. Well, of course in bloody Beverly Hills. He wouldn't come to this place. Nobody nobody visits me here anymore. Now, when I had a place in Beverly Hills, I, there was people dropping in all the time. Dropping in is a good e way to express that. They would drop in and say hello. All right. Dear Creature Features, I want to thank you for putting on such a delightful program. You all never fail at making me smile. I've enclosed a picture for the tan tantalizing Tangella. That it would be this. Look at this. Mm. We'll put a close up up. It's a uh, for her to color. No, it's it's uh, one of the skulls from the Dios de Muerte. Right. Ah, still right, right. So, no, she likes that. I think she's she's dressed up like that before. Uh, let's see. She can color it or throw knives at it, whatever she pleases. She will color it and then throw knives at it. More than likely. Right. Vince, you are a most vivacious and entertaining host. Tangela is a treat, a trick-or-treat. Livingston is a classy gentleman. Vivacious. And I, I feel sorry for poor Andrew, but glad Tangela has a playmate to haunt. You should see what she does to the maid. Just if you're wondering about haunting. I really enjoyed The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini. I like that film as well. Remember that one? Yes. No, it was a strange film, but you it know what I like about strange. another 60s go-go movies? I like those. They were just funner. Much more fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, and other campy films you have shown. Have you seen these films? Basket Case, 1982. Frankenhooker, 1989. They're probably too risque to show on your program, but good can't be fun if you wish to watch them yourselves. Please watch Blood and Donuts. It's Canadian from 1995. Much love from Witchy, Massachusetts. Misero, a.k.a. Jenny Wilson. Well, thank you, Jenny. Uh, those films, I think I saw Frankenhooker. But I noticed I saw Basket Case. Have you seen Basket Case? I don't believe so. Because you're becoming a basket case working here, are you not? That might be appropriate. That's why he wouldn't watch it. Anyways, thanks for writing. We'll get this up to Tangelo as soon as she wakes up. Maybe. Maybe she'll never wake up. Give her something to do. That's right. Next up, Mr. Livingston. There we are, the last one. Last but not least is from Elena Petruzzelli. Petruzzelli. That's Italian. That one's definitely Italian. Right? More than likely. All right. And she's in Fuquay, Varina, North Carolina. That's a nice place. What is it called? Fuquay, Varina, North Carolina. Fuquay, Varina. I've never heard of it. Well, Elena Petruzzelli is from there, so it must be a nice place. All right. She goes. Hey, you guys, my boyfriend Elliot and I watch every episode together. We are huge old black and white horror movie fanatics and all old horror, actually. You know, I don't know why you like this show because we haven't shown many black and whites, although we're shown one tonight. So I suppose we're okay, right? No, I, I would say our percentage now is maybe 70, 30%, right? Black and white. 30% black and white. Right? Yes. Well, you know, in our in our early days, we showed almost 100% black and white, so it's a, it's a nice change. Uh, anyway, she goes on. He always says how awesome and special it would be if his name and my two mine too, of course, for writing, be mentioned during commentary. Yours truly, Elena. Uh, okay, so Elliot, you never put his last name, Elena. Maybe maybe he has the same last name. No, that would be her husband. So Elliot um, in Fuquay, Verena. I am watching you, watching us, watching you, watching us. Something like that. Anyways, you have a very nice girlfriend, and you should buy her something special for her birthday tomorrow. Or no, buy her something tomorrow for her birthday. Better. Just in case, I know when your birthday is. Diamonds, like a big diamond ring, right? I wouldn't push a that. A big, fat diamond ring with gold and silver. 
Maybe. I don't know. Well, you, you never know. She might could, not like We could diamonds. be responsible for an engagement. You could be. We could be invited to the wedding. I'll bring you gifts. And Tangelo will bring you trouble. All right. Thank you so much for writing. Is that it? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us an email yourself, send it to this address over here. Or if you'd like to send us an envelope with a letter and stamps and use the U.S. government to do it, use the address you see right here. We'll be right back with uh, hopefully Tangella and Andrew, maybe. Perhaps Andrew has survived this ordeal. Well, he did. And uh, we're going to get right back to uh, Target Earth, 1954. Don't go away. Well, swing low, sweet chariot. <laughs> it tells why my feet were beginning to kill me. Be my guest. <gasps> it's Faith. Just like the girl in the alley. I think I'm gonna be sick. Better give Vicky a hand. How do you think it happened? Wish I knew. The keys are still in ignition. Help me get them out of the way. Let's see if we can get this thing started. No use. The battery's probably dead. The battery must be dead. The radio doesn't work either. Let's have a look under the hood. Looks like somebody beat us to it. Let's hope I'm a better mechanic than he was. What's wrong? Distributor cap is off and the arm is missing. What does that mean in English? It means you can't get the engine started. Who are you? Otis is the name. Charles Otis. I hope I didn't frighten you. Oh, no. I always shake like this. What are you doing here? Trying to get out of town, like yourselves. Only won't do any good to look for a car in running condition. What makes you so sure of that? I tried it half a dozen in the last three or four miles. The distributor arms are missing, and all of them. Who are you trying to kid? Not so fast, Jim. It seems to me they did something like this in England during the war when they thought they'd be invaded. Did what? Order the distributor caps removed whenever a car was left unattended. But that still doesn't explain why he was killed. Well, here's one gal that's not going to hang around wondering, even if I have to walk clear out of this state. Which way did you come? From the north, uptown. You'd never believe it. The whole town's a wreck. Windows smashed, houses and stores wrecked. There must have been a lot of looting before everyone cleared out. That figures. Did you see any people? About a dozen, like that. They all seemed to be killed the same way. There was one guy just outside an art store. Must have been trying to get away with a painting when, when they got him. That means they're already in the north end of town. And in the west, near my rooming house. Frank, I'm scared. You're not the only one. Look! Over there on the wall! I'm getting out of here. Don't be a fool. If you run out there, he'll spot us all. Well, what do we do? Back against the wall. Quick! Take it easy, hon. He can't see us from where he is. It doesn't look human. Don't let the shadow fool you. What else could it be? I wish I knew. It's going away. Yeah, for how long? We can't stay here. We'll be killed, like all the others. Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. That hotel over there. Ought to be easy enough to get inside. Yeah, for us or for them? Both. We have to make a break for it. I hope we make it before they spot us. Well, then let's get started. Anything's better than standing out in the open like this. I'll go ahead. And, and if the coast is clear, I'll wave. Who? What if it isn't? Then you can be the next guinea pig. Be careful. Don't worry. The street's probably a lot safer now than it is when the traffic is normal. No. 
now. Come on. behind the furniture, quick, and keep out of sight. Do you think they spotted us? We'll know, soon enough. Hey, Jim, do you see anything? Not a sign of them, the street's deserted. Aren't you the optimistic soul? Come on. What do we do now? Well, we have to figure a way out of this. It's not going to be easy. We don't even know what we're up against. Take a look at this. A state of national emergency was declared yesterday when hostile forces of unknown origin landed in open country approximately 50 miles due north of the city at 11 o'clock last night. While little is known as to strengthen deployment of the enemy at this time, Bruce K. Peterson, in charge of civil defense for this area, ordered immediate evacuation of the city. I knew it was bad, but this... I don't believe it. Mystery man. Who are they kidding? That shadow on the wall. He could... I mean, they could be anywhere. Thousands of them. I don't think so. At least not yet. If they operate like we did during the last war, the one who almost spotted us was part of an advance patrol. Then the rest won't be far behind. We're trapped. Right in the middle. They'll kill us all, I tell you. Take it easy. We've got plenty of trouble without you blowing your top. What do you expect me to do? Stand still while you sound off on military tactics? You got any better ideas? You bet I have. I'm getting out of here. Now. You're doing nothing of the kind. I'm warning you. Don't you try to stop me. But you can't go. It's suicide. They'll spot you before you've gone 50 feet. I'll take my chances. It'll be a lot easier getting past a few of them than waiting here for the whole army to show up. Wait a minute. seen the rest of us. Listen, we'd be better off upstairs. Chances are they won't take time to search all the buildings. Look, get over there by the stairs. I'll grab some keys from the desk. Come on, let's go. Okay. This ought to do it. 402 to 404 must be a suite. Go ahead. Honey, make yourself at home. Oh, what do you know? The bridal suite, at last. I settled for a tent about a thousand miles from here. I know what you mean. Right now, even my desk at the home office would look good. Let's check the joint just in case. Good idea. Yeah. safe up here. Hey, this is swell layout. Yeah. Come on. Well? Well, what do you think? I'm afraid we haven't much choice. At least it's comfortable. 
You know, maybe it isn't as bad as we think. The army must be doing something. Yeah, only in the meantime, we got to play hide and seek with a bunch of zombies from Mars or wherever they come from. He's right, Frank. They're bound to find out where we are sooner or later. Yeah, I know. Well, about the only thing we can do is wait till it's dark and then try to sneak out of town toward the south. You're not forgetting what happened to Otis, are you? I'm not forgetting a thing. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Tangella should do more of these little touristy things. Do you think? No, she she would be like a good ambassador to uh, to some small nation. Like you know, the, she could be like a celebrity spokesmodel. Oh dear. No, she could be. So uh, I take it you didn't have much luck getting her to come down. No. What happened? She hit me with a bat. Well, that would sting, wouldn't it? How about a mitt? Did she use a mitt? No, an actual bat. She hit you with an actual flying bat. An actual bat. She took a bat and threw it at you and hit and caused all this damage. Well, that was the start of it. Oh, yeah. All right. You know, this this poor bloke received so much abuse from her. He's very unfortunate. I, I shall have a talking to with her. Try to just install a bell in her room or something. A bell in her room. No, no, no. I, I shall talk to her about this. Anyway, so the film we are watching tonight, Target Earth. So far, all we've seen is an army of robot shadow type things. A shadow I saw. Well, you know, an army of robots could cause some damage. Indeed. And, you know, or an army of Tangellas could cause some damage as well. But uh, no, that would be world don't. annihilation. Right. I think you only need one Tangella. One Tangella can destroy the world. All right, well, what do you say, boys? Shall we get back to this film? I think we must. Yes. All right, back we go to Target Earth. Don't go away, it gets better. Promise. Gentlemen, I don't have to tell you the situation is critical. Since roughly 2300 last night, when the first units landed here in Sector B-97, we have been confronted with an enemy the like of which defies description. Who or what they are is, is an open question. We won't know the answers till we take a few prisoners. So far, we haven't been able to do that. All we can be sure of is this. The invasion was not launched by any power on the surface of this Earth. What about the scientists, General? Haven't they any idea where the enemy could have originated? The consensus of theories points to the planet Venus. Assuming, of course, that the invaders are human beings like ourselves. Is there any reason to believe they're not? Frankly, we don't know what to think. What fragmentary reports we've been able to piece together indicate they behave like automatons. Apparently completely indifferent to personal danger. So far, they've made no effort to break out of the city, but that's only a matter of time. How many of them? Not more than several hundred at most. They're obviously only an advanced element for the main force. Well, a 
few hundred men shouldn't be much of a problem. That's what we thought. The first contact was made by the 387th Airborne and about 2,400. They were wiped out to a man. At the present moment, our main line of defense is here in a semicircle roughly 10 miles south of the city line. The third armored is holding down the left flank here and the seventh is on the right. They're both pretty much chewed up by now. General Wood, sir. What is it? Airstrike in progress against the main enemy position. Colonel Meade thought you'd want to follow by radar. have weapons we've never even dreamed of. Well, that figures. They were smart enough to get here in the first place. Who are they, Frank? Where can they come from? Who can tell? My guess would be Venus. What makes you say that? As far as I know, it's the only planet that might be capable of supporting human life. It's covered by a heavy layer of clouds. That means plenty of water, oxygen, and hydrogen in its atmosphere. Say, where'd you learn all this? College. <laughs> Only I didn't get it all from the classrooms. I had a buddy named Richard Banks, a regular science fiction bug. He got me reading the magazines, too. Don't tell me you believe all that stuff. Oh, not all of it, but some of those writers weren't too far off the beam. There's plenty of evidence of that right outside. Yeah, and if the Air Force couldn't get past those guys, it don't look too good for us. Those planes were shot down a good 15 miles south of here. That would mean the whole city must be surrounded. You mean even if we did get out of here after dark, it wouldn't do any good, hmm? I'm afraid we wouldn't get any further than Otis did. Oh, you guys are a big help. Things aren't rough enough, you have to scare her half to death. Well, all I said was... Yeah, I'll skip it. Vicky's right. We did act like a couple of chumps. I'm sorry, Nora. I shouldn't have said that. Why not? It's the truth. Well, we might still have a chance to get out of this. After all, we know the Air Force is still fighting. Only we're right in the middle. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? This time yesterday, I wouldn't have cared if they dropped an H-bomb right on the roof. What do you mean? 
This afternoon when you phoned me, I told you I'd slipped through the evacuation. Well, didn't that sound a little peculiar to you? Maybe I didn't think it was any of my business then. And now? A lot's happened since then. Now I want to know everything I can about you. Would it make any difference if I told you the reason I slept through everything was because... because I never intended to wake up at all? I tried to kill myself last night, Frank. Sleeping pills. I know what you're thinking. Otis wanted to live and he died. I wanted to die and... Oh, I guess it doesn't make much sense. Suicide never does. But why should a girl like you... Who well, has... What do you know about me? I could be anything. A thief, a murderess. Even worse. No, I don't think so. Whatever you did, there must have been a very good reason. You don't need a reason to die, Frank. Just one to live. Somehow I thought that I didn't have one anymore. You still feel that way? I don't know why, but everything's changed. Now that it's too late to do anything about it. Right. What have you got? A report from 337th Fighter Bomber Command. Any of them get through? Not a one, sir. If those jets can't get through, nothing can. What about the atomic artillery? Well, we got the new models that were flown in an hour ago. They won't be assembled for several hours. Are they sending us the new guided missiles? Yes, we received those along with the atomic artillery. I never thought the day would come when we turned them against one of our own cities. There won't be a building left standing. I know, I know. It can't be helped. Urgent dispatch, sir, from Colonel Powers, 7th Armored Division. We've captured one. How'd they do it? A tank crew picked him up by the side of the road in sector B-107. It says it was completely inactive, lying there. Where is he now? They're bringing him into the lab, sir. The lab? Why not to interrogation? We'll find out when we get over there. Come on. Hi, my name is Edith, and I'm calling from Alberta in Canada. I love your channel. I watch it all the time. And I'm hoping that you'll play Time Machine, the original one, with Pat Boone. That would be awesome. Keep it going. Love it. Bye. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, you're rather late, but that's all right. Uh, Tangela's not with us tonight. Thank God. Well, she's. We're, we're showing her little vignettes that she did at Bodega Bay today. She's quite tired. She had a, a rough day. I think she had a fun day, though. Did she not? I believe she did. Yeah. Who had a rough day? Well, now if you try to wake up a small bear, well, you told me to go wake her up. I know. Well, right, there was an advisement though. You, you don't have to do it. He's technically off right now, you know. He's, he, he normally does not work this late. He's just here because he wants to be here. He doesn't have to be here. It's safer down here. It is safer. All right, anyways, we are watching Target Earth 1954, and we've ascertained that this invasion is from Venus. I'm not sure how, but yes. Well, I always was under the impression that the mean ones would come from Mars and the nice ones would be from Venus. 
But Venus has no surface. Well, they didn't know this in 1954, oh. right? Right. Or maybe they have. They live on boats. Could be a thing. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I got this thing here. I want to show you. It's it's a creature features game. It has nothing to do with us, right? No. No. This was made. You said Tom, 1975. Correct. And it was available all over the country. We were doing the. Uh, what was that? Uh, the, the Creature Feature Day at uh, the Orinda Theater for Tom's film. And this bloke, he was a jolly bloke. He was very jolly. No, he came up and he said, I want to give this to you as a gift. And I, I told him, I do, I do not play board games. I, I have nobody. You know, Tangella would throw the pieces away. It's beneath him. And Andrew, well, maybe Andrew would play. Here, take a look at this. Maybe, maybe see if you'll play. Anyways, uh, he's a nice guy. I forgot to get his name, but uh, he, he gave us that game. And I, I suppose it's some kind of collector's item, right? Yes. I mean, do you think I could get $25 on eBay with this? 20? 20? 120. That's worth 120 American dollars. It is. My goodness. Lot. That was a nice gift. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe you could just have it. You don't have to steal it. You just have it. Anyways, let's get back to this film, right? Right. Right? Uh, if we must. All right. Off to Target Earth. See you soon. Bye. That's the third pair in the last ten minutes. I wonder where they're going. I don't know. But I got a good suggestion for them. Vicky, how can you joke at a time like this? Don't kid yourself, honey. The only reason I open my trap is to keep my teeth from chattering. Those things out there are bad enough in broad daylight. It's going to be dark pretty soon. You know, I was just thinking, as long as we have to stay here, we might as well do it the right way. Now, there must be a flashlight or some candles around somewhere. Why don't I go and look for them? You need to go downstairs alone? With all those creeps around? Not on your life. Well, we have to have some light. And who knows, I might be able to find some food. All right, but I'm going with you. One of us ought to stay here with the girls. All right, you stay. Oh, we're so gallant all of a sudden. Yesterday, you wouldn't even stand up to give me a seat on the bus. Yeah, and today, the buses aren't running anymore. Jim's right, Frank. You should both go. It's the only fair thing to yeah, do. What about you and Vicky? Don't worry about us. We'll lock ourselves in till you get back. Come on, get started while there's still some light. Come on. stop them anywhere. Well, at least now we know what we're up against. We only had a little time to work out a defense. Well, we've already started electronic research. The objective being to find out what caused this break. We might have a few hours if we're lucky and they hold off reinforcing their advance elements. Has the general staff been notified? Yes, sir. Major Reynolds sent an urgent message. Good. They'll probably want to fly in a team from G2. Order the landing strip in Able Sector held at all costs. Yes, sir. That'll take almost four hours. I doubt that we'll have the time. I understand, General. We'll do everything we can, just in case. <laughs> Keep away from the window, Nora. It's no use taking any more chances than we have to. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't thinking. We shouldn't have let them go, Vicky. Something's gone wrong. I know it. Hey, 
Hey, take it easy, kid. They've been gone almost 20 minutes. If anything's happened to Frank, I'll, I'll never forgive myself. I thought you just met him today. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. Not a thing. It's just that way with me and Jim. Only neither one of us was smart enough to do anything about it. Hey, open up. It's us. But you'd never get back. Uh, hey, you hit the jackpot. You ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, better wait till I make sure the drapes are drawn tightly. Okay. There you are. All the comforts are home. Sure. If you like haunted houses. <laughs> Don't you two ever do anything besides insult each other? Well, we have our moments. Yeah, but this isn't one of them. Oh, funny. How long do you think we'll have to stay here? I'm afraid that's up to the Army. Yeah, but whose? Ours or theirs? You have to do that. You'd think you were in a cage or something the way you keep pacing around. What do you want me to do? Take a nice long walk out in the street? Few more hours in this flea trap and we'll all be stir crazy. Well, at least we're still alive. Now sit down and keep your mouth shut. Who do you think you are ordering me around like a train monkey? You think we were married or something? Well, if we're not, it ain't because you haven't been trying for the last ten years. Go ahead. Rub it in. I ought to have my head examined for putting up with you at all. We wouldn't be here now if you'd listened to me last night. Sure, the whole thing's my fault. I even planned the invasion. We still could have been evacuated with the others, but no. No, you had to drink your way through half the bars in town. All right, so I did a little celebrating. How often does a guy hit the daily double at 60 to 1? Once in 10 years, if you're any example. Let's live, baby. I hit the GGs for 240 clams. Ha! A lot of good the money is now. You didn't have to come along. You ain't the only blonde around. Crazy dame. Jim, why do we have to fight like this all the time? I don't know, baby. I'll tell you one thing. If we ever get out of this thing alive, we'll do all our fighting from the same corner from now on. Fireworks over? For a few rounds, anyway. You know what's funny about those two? Gee, they needle each other every minute. Yet when the chips are down... I know. Jerry and I were a lot like that. Jerry? My husband. Thanks. What happened to your husband? He was killed in an automobile accident six months ago. Oh, we were arguing just like Jim and Vicky. I was driving, never even saw the car that hit us. When I regained consciousness in the hospital, they... they told me Jerry was dead. And you've been blaming yourself ever since. Is that why you took those sleeping pills? I know how you must feel, Nora, but you can't keep on letting it get you like it did last night. I'm sorry. It, it's just that I've never been able to talk about it. Till now. We've been on the go for nearly 14 hours. What you need is a little sleep. With one of those things or whatever they are liable to burst in here any minute. Well, I haven't tried anything yet. I think we're safe enough until morning. And after that? But you share the bedroom with Vicky. Jim and I will be in the other room, just in case anything happens. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. 
It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. for the time being. All right, cut in your generator. So that's what makes them tick. Electronics. Let's call it a system of electromagnetic impulses. By exerting positive or negative charges, as the case may be, they've been able to duplicate every desired motion of the human body. Hmm. What's it made of? Surgical steel, according to all the usual tests. But how they make it pliable in the joints is something else. An army of machines, incapable of pain, fear, or compassion, and practically indestructible. There's got to be a human element somewhere. No machine can think for itself. And we're coming to that. Barton, would you set up the helmet for another test, please? Now, as far as we've been able to determine, these robots operate on a radar principle, utilizing the super high frequencies. Like our homing type guided missiles. Hmm? Precisely. First, an image is picked up on the cathode ray tube, which is mounted in the face of the helmet. From there, it's transmitted to some control point or monitor station by this. I've never seen anything like it. Are you sure this is a transmitter? It has to be from the position it occupied in the helmet in relation to the cathode tube. Naturally, it operates on a completely different principle from anything we've ever developed. What's its frequency range? <laughs> so far, we haven't been able to figure it out. Well, what about the antenna? The length of that ought to give you a lead. There is no antenna. They must utilize a, a portion of the surface of the shell, or perhaps the entire robot and there's no way we can jam it and put their whole army out of commission. I'm afraid not. Well, what about the control point? They have to correlate their information somewhere and send back the impulses to guide the machines. Well, that all depends on the strength of the transmitter. Could be only a few miles. On the other hand, it might reach all the way back to their home base, wherever that may be. Well, there's got to be a weak point somewhere. What about the cathode ray tube? It was damaged, wasn't it? That's right. It was the only visible damage. And we figured that it put the entire mechanism out of commission. Well, if that's the case, you mean all we have to do is knock out the cathode ray tube? <laughs> Except for two things. In the first place, nobody's ever been able to get that close to one without being annihilated. In the second? I'll show you. Everything's set, Tom. Thank you, Barton. Now, as you can see, this is a standard M1 semi-automatic rifle. It's aimed squarely at the center of the undamaged portion of the tube. Now, if you gentlemen will just stand back. Just flattened down like a wad of chewing gum. That's right. I don't know how that tube was cracked originally, but we'll never do it with a bullet, even at point-blank range.
caught by the finger. Jim, give me a hand. Stand back. Keep away. Hold it, sister, before you get hurt. All right, now back off in the center of the room. Let's go. That goes for you, too, Junior. Start moving. Do as he says, Jim. Please. Not so fast. Who are you and what do you want? You heard what the lady said. Start moving. in here? There's a candle on the table right behind you. Suppose we all keep calm and have a little talk. Nice and friendly-like. Oh, sure. All my friends carry guns. Why did you take a shot at us through the door? What did you expect me to do? Stand still while you chop my hand off? We thought you were one of the invaders. <laughs> you know something? I thought the same thing about you. All right, so we all made a mistake. You're gonna hold that gun on us all night? I don't know yet. It all depends on you. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. If you're just joining us, that was Tangella doing her thing. Yeah, she might win that contest. She, a year's <laughs> worth of soup. I would think it's chowder clam chowder. would be better. It's clam chowder. She gets free clam chowder for one year. It is clam chowder. Right. No, it's a, it's a big deal here in Bodega Bay. Uh, anyways, uh, I am joined uh, not by Tangella tonight because she's tired, but I have Andrew and then Livingston because we have no guests, no Tangella. No, it's just me. And I made these blokes stand here because uh, I don't want to do the show alone. I, who am I going to speak to? This? Him, yes. Him, yeah, no. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this film, uh, I just got an interesting piece of trivia from our director, Tom. He says that for this film, they only made one robot. One robot. It's supposed to be an army of robots, and they only made one. Mm. Clever. So I suppose it's just one bloke inside the costume, right? Or do you think it was a real robot? Do you think they actually... Yeah. Yeah, somebody, in somebody in the costume. Yeah. Lots of mirrors, maybe. Mirrors? Mm. No, that's how Houdini made the elephant disappear. Mm. Yeah. He invented that trick. Houdini and the mirrors? You never I, saw how that I trick is done? I've never heard of that. No, it's, it's amazing. I saw, I saw it on that, that uh, the masked magician who shows how all the tricks were done. No. This is a, a famous program. And it made many magicians angry, I'm told. They're but looking I'm, for him, I believe. Speaking of looking for him, I understand you're taking a short vacation. Short, indeed. What, what are you doing? I'm going to a butler's convention in Iceland. A butler's convention in Iceland. You know, yes. I heard that Iceland is green and Greenland is ice. 
Is that true? That is true. And so what, what, what does one do at a, a butler's convention besides buttle? Well, one does not buttle. One exchanges ideas, talks about interesting things, and uh, gets to know old friends. <coughs> Boring. I think, I think he's passing out resumes. I think it's an employment festival looking for. He's, he's going to end up working for some, some Russian oligarch in Iceland, buttling for them. That I would not be doing. No. Well, you know, you, there'll be no ghosts there, so you're going to miss out on that benefit. There'll oh, be that's no Tangela there. That's a benefit. Oh, that would be a benefit. There'll be no Tangela. There'll be no Andrew there. There'll be no me. You'll just have this boring life of, of, of preparing Sioux pots for, for beverages. Just going to exchange ideas, that is all. Yeah, you know, I worry about him quitting sometime. Catch up on friends. Can, can you imagine replacing him? No, that would be impossible. I, I live in a household of conflict, and we need peace around here. So, so maybe one of these ideas he'll get from the Budling Conference is mm. how not to be so, so scrappy. Scrappy. No, well, you're you're slightly abrasive sometimes. Oh, no, he is. It's a form of protection. Oh, all right. All right what do you say we finish up this film, and Let's. then when we come back? I'm going to find out what you two blokes are doing next, right? Well, Wait. I know what you're doing next. I'm going to find out what he's doing next. Thank you. All right, off we go. The ending of Target Earth. We will be back on the other side of the credits. Don't go away. chain of resistors went out. We'll have to start again from scratch. How long will it take? Oh, about an hour, unless his playmates beat us to the punch. Look, do you have to do that? What are you talking about? In the last half hour, you've done everything but kiss that gun. Gives me the creeps. Well, no, I'm real sorry. I didn't know you were the sensitive type. She's not, but I am. I'll put that away before somebody gets hurt. I wouldn't try anything if I were you. Wouldn't be smart. Forget it, Tim. I guess I'm jumpy, and I thought. We all are, since he showed up. Look, if you don't like this setup, why don't you leave? I wouldn't have a chance by myself. And neither would you, without this gun. No matter how you figure it, we're just stuck with each other. Nora, come on, let's try to get some sleep. What time is it? 6.15. The sun's coming up. What happens now? We can't leave until we're sure they're gone. Let's pray they don't search the building. You know, I don't know which is worse. Taking a chance outside or being cooped up here with that trigger-happy screwball. You mean Davis? Yeah. Every time he looks at me, I... Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, this may sound crazy, but I swear I've seen that guy somewhere before. It's possible. You could have lived or worked in your own neighborhood. You could have passed him on the street a dozen times. No, that is what I meant. 
Here's another thing. Why wasn't he evacuated like everybody else in town? You forget they overlooked us, too. We've only got ourselves to blame. Maybe. Only what about that gun? Hmm? I'm not sure, but it looks just like a police revolver. Now you are imagining things. And if it were true, how would you know? Are you kidding? There isn't a flat foot I'd... Ah, uh, skip it. I must be off my rocker. Boy, what I need is a drink. There's some beer in the kitchen. It's probably awfully warm by now. Honey, I don't care if it's on fire. I'll get it. I want to see if Frank's awake anyway. Suit yourself. I always did like breakfast in bed. I won't be a minute. Mm-hmm. What do you want? Well, let's say you've been waiting for a chance to talk to you. Alone. Not now. Please, I'm tired. Later on. Not very friendly, are you? It's my privilege. Well, maybe you'd like to change your mind. Mm -hmm. I'll remember that. So will I. Now, let me pass. Use your head, Nora. I'm in a tight spot. I can get us out of here alive. How? Now, look, there's a main sewer line on 7th Street, only a block from here. Once we reach it, we could double back behind their lines. We'd be safe. How come you haven't told the others? <laughs> Why should I? We couldn't all make it without being spotted. We could try. Uh-huh. No, I've got other plans for them. Yes, I think we use them as decoys. While they're being run down, we make a break in the opposite direction. Just you and me. You mean you... You kill all the others just to save your own life. Yours too. Don't forget that. You must be insane if you think I do. You shouldn't have said that, Nora. I don't like people who think I'm crazy. Let me go. Frank, help yeah, Frank. Call your wife and call them all. You had your chance. All right, take your hands off her. You why you All right. All right, now back out in the center of the living room. All of you. Let's go. Figure it at 14 millimeters. I got it. Where will we start the machine? Well, you better start it at 30,000. We'll bring it up at controlled intervals from there. Right. How long will it take? For well, just a few minutes. We're making some last minute changes now. You still figure the answer's in the cathode ray tube? It's got to be. Of course, we're hampered by the fact that the surface is an integral part of the helmet itself. We couldn't dare risk taking it out. This is our last chance, Tom. The atomic artillery and guided missiles are all assembled and in position. We don't come up with anything in the next five minutes. I've got orders to start shelling the city. All right, sir. Good. Now, if you gentlemen just stand over there.
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Okay, this is far enough for now. What are you trying to prove, Davis? You'll find out what I'm good and ready to tell you. Go on up front and see if you can spot any of our playmates on the street. If you're so interested, go see for yourself. I said get moving before this gun happens to go off in somebody's belly. Stay where you are, Vicky. He hasn't enough nerve to shoot. Oh, I wouldn't count on it if I were you. You win. Say anything? Sure. There's one out there on the front lawn. Having a picnic. How far away is it? About 50 yards on the other side of the street. Moving away from us. Good. We'll give it a couple of minutes. You talk as though you expect to go out there. I'm not. But you are. Oh. And what makes you so sure of that? Because I've got the gun. So that's it. We're the pigeons, so you can take off while that thing out there chases us. Well, now you catch on real quick. But that would be murder. Maybe. Only this time, nobody can do a thing about it. This time? Sure. I knew he looked familiar. He's a guy that killed that dame down on Skid Row about a month ago. It was in all the papers. That's right. Big headlines, lots of pictures. Just like there'll be when I found out I killed the guard and got a waiter in evacuation. So that's why you stayed behind. You didn't dare leave the city. They'll be watching every road out of town. Sure. Every road except the ones behind the enemy lines. Now all I need is a five minute start. And you're gonna give it to me. Now get moving, all of you. But you can't do this. Well, what'll it be, guys? Take a chance on the street or get it here? It won't work, Buster. If we're going to die anyway, one of us will get you first. I'm warning you. Keep back. You won't shoot. Crazy dame. Up 
upstairs. It's our only chance. find a way to another roof. There must be a ladder somewhere. Over there, quick! Okay? We are now. But if you'd got here 30 seconds later, it would have been a different story. What are you doing in the city anyway? Don't you know it's a combat zone? You should have been evacuated like everybody else. I guess we were overlooked. By the time we guessed what was happening, it was too late to leave. Those men were everywhere. Not men, lady. They were robots. A whole army of them. No wonder the bullets wouldn't stop them. Nothing will. Except this. I don't understand. What is it? An oscillator. You heard the noise it puts out. We discovered the robots couldn't take the vibrations of the sound waves. It smashes the glass in their cathode ray tube. You mean the vibrations smash the tubes? That's right. Puts them out of commission and nothing flat. Then you mean the city and the whole world is safe again? Maybe. Till the next time. What makes you so sure there'll be a next time? Well, from what I was told, if they would have used a certain metal instead of glass in that tube, all the oscillators in the world couldn't have stopped them. But don't worry, folks. We're working on that right now. Hop in the Jeep and we'll see what the medics can do with that arm. And so ends Target Earth. They killed the robots with a, a radio sound thing. Mm. You know, you know what would have been better for the time this this film was made. They they could have like done a thing where rock and roll music killed 
the invading robots. Well, robot, it's only one. Right? Wouldn't that have been good? That would have been interesting. Right. Rock and roll kills the robots. So make sure we do this film. Actually, I could do I could read up the sound they used and put in rock and roll from my own old band. Oh, that would do it for sure. See? He knows. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, what, what do you got going on soon? Um, well, going to the doctor to get my rabies shot. Oh. And then going to play this. I, I, you know, I think while you're at the doctor, you should have him take a look at this, this eye thing. What eye thing? The bat thing. Oh, oh yes. Is that, is that the purpose of the That's rabies? That's the purpose. Oh, I yeah. see. Well, you think it bit you when she hit you with it? Just to be safe. Tenshelly hit him with a bat, and not a baseball bat, a, a an actual flying bat. Well, it's a bat. fruit bat. I don't think it would have rabies. Fruit bat. No. Well, you know, he might turn into Batman. Oh, good one. No, no, no. This sounds like the beginning of, of a, a superhero film where innocent man tries to wake up a woman. She throws a bat at him and he turns into Batman. Your imagination is... Yeah, well, I should write my own DC comic, should I not? You Should you not? Uh, yeah. For a man on his way on a short vacation to a butler conference in Iceland, <sighs> he sure is a bit snippy. Are you all packed and ready to go? Of course. Mm. He's always snippy. He's, he's going to have fun. All right, well, I think that's it, right? Yes. We cover everything. Hopefully right. next week uh, we'll have Tangela back after she's been rested. But uh, that's it. And then uh, next week we've got we've got a fun guest coming next week. I, I don't want to blow the surprise. We've got a fun guest coming next week. I, I don't know what movie we're going to show, but it's going to be a fun movie, right? I'm sure. I'm sure. And uh, that's it. You have a wonderful night, and we will see you next week. Don't forget, we love you. Bye. So, uh, Andrew, you know, with Livingston gone, uh, who in God's name am I going to get to fill in for him? How about Tracy the plumber? That's not a bad idea. I can see it now. Souffle end of the day. <laughs>